Here we are going to discuss the last topic of our course and it's called digital carrier system. So far we have been talking about transmission of pulses, choosing the pulses according to Nyquist first criteria or Nyquist second criteria and then the transmission of these pulses without any carrier. We didn't mention any carrier. And this is correct sometimes in case of wired communication systems. If you have coaxial cable, you have a, a, a pair of wires to transmit telephone signals uh, on them or computer wire, wired communication systems. But when it comes to wireless communication systems, we have to use a carrier. And we have to modulate one parameter of this carrier at the transmitter, and then the receiver is going to use this parameter that we modulated in order to uh, uh, in order to retrieve the message once again. So here we are going to start with the uh, carrier modulation in the digital case. We are going to start with the binary case first, where we have one or zero only, and then uh, later we are going to extend it to the MF. Similar to the analog case, we have two types of modulation. We can modulate the carrier in two ways: either we modulate the amplitude or angle amplitude modulation or angle modulation and angle modulation we have two options either we do phase modulation or frequency modulation so it's exactly the same as the analog modulation except that the naming is a bit different so for example the amplitude modulation is called here amplitude shift keying and we abbreviate it as ASK, and in the case of binary, in the case of binary, we call it sometimes we call it on of key for a reason that will be clear in a few minutes. So this is the name of the amplitude modulation in the digital case, amplitude shift key. The phase modulation is called phase shift key and the frequency modulation is called frequency shift key. So the naming is only different. In addition to the naming, we have only two levels. You want to transmit binary 1 or binary 0, right? So you need only two amplitudes to represent the amplitude shift key, the amplitude modulation. And you need only two phases and only two frequencies in the case of frequency shift key. So let's start with the amplitude shift key. We need only two amplitudes, so usually they transmit the signal ASK of T as either a carrier with amplitude A if they want to represent binary 1 or a carrier with amplitude 0 if they want to transmit binary 0 and hence you expect that you expect that the signal if you want to transmit 1, 0, 1 for example you expect that you are going to transmit here a carrier with amplitude 1 constant amplitude something like this here for 0 you transmit 0 and here you transmit a carrier with constant amplitude so the signal would look like this so here we have a carrier here we have zero here we have a carrier again so the signal will look something like this if you want to transmit in this example binary one binary zero binary one right you can see from this signal that this is equivalent to an on-off keying multiplied by on-off keying, the on-off keying that we studied before, which is representing the one by a positive pulse zero with zero, multiplied by a carrier, right? Multiplied by a cosine wave. So this can be seen or can be viewed as this is equivalent to on-off on -off signaling multiplied multiplied by cosine omega ct. That's why we call it sometimes on-off key. We call this type of population, we call it on-off key. So this is, uh, uh, this is similar to the on-off signaling, okay, multiplied by cosine. Let's now move to the next uh, uh, type of mutation, which is phase shift. But before we move to, next, the, to the next type of mutation, here the amplitudes, the amplitudes a and 0 of the carrier, we modulate the amplitudes, right? So we have one amplitude to represent binary 1 and another amplitude which chose to be 0 to represent binary 0. These amplitudes, these amplitudes can be chosen to be any two amplitudes. For example, it can be positive or negative. It's better not to go into this now. Now let's 
move to the next type of modulation, which is the phase shift key. And we abbreviate it as PSK. In the phase shift key, we need to transmit the carrier with two different phases. One phase to represent binary one, and another phase to represent binary zero. And then we transmit the signal phi of t, phi PSK of t, which will be, if you want to transmit binary one, you transmit the carrier with a phase zero. And if you want to transmit binary, Zero, you transmit the carrier with a phase pi. And we choose here two phases that are far from each other. So zero and the opposite phase is pi. And this is equivalent to minus a to sine omega ct. This will represent binary zero. So we have two different phases here. Phase zero to represent binary one and phase pi to represent the binary zero. And then you expect that the shape of the signal, if we want to sketch the signal in the time domain, uh, in case of transmitting 1, 0, 1, the same example, you will see that the amplitude in both cases, the amplitude of the signal, the amplitude of the cosine, whether binary 1 or binary 0, both cases the amplitude of the cosine will be A, right? But the phase is the thing that is different. Also, the frequency is the same. So the amplitude is the same, frequency is the same. So the only difference between these two is the phase. So the amplitude is the same. And let's see, say this is the intervals. So for the binary one, we're going to transmit a cosine wave. Let's say something like this. And then starting from here, you are going to transmit binary zero, which is negative a cosine. So the phase is going to reverse. So instead of going down, it's going to reverse. So the will be a phase reversal here. And again, starting from here, you are going to transmit A cosine, which is uh, out of phase with this waveform by 180 degrees. So the phase is going to reverse starting from this point, and so on. So here, as you see, the frequency is the same, amplitude of the cosine is the same, but there will be phase change uh, as long as you move from binary 1 to binary 0, from binary 0 to binary 1, the phase between the two cosines will be different. So, this is basically the phase shift key. And as you see, as you see from the equation, or as you see from the sketch, the phase shift key can be seen as, it can be seen as multiplication between polar signaling, you can imagine it as multiplication between polar signaling, polar signaling to represent 1, 0, 1. In the polar, we used to represent the binary 1 by positive pulse, binary 0 by negative pulse, right? Multiplied by cosine wave, by a carrier, cosine wave, right? So the uh, phase shift key can be seen as a multiplication between polar and a carrier, polar signaling and carrier, right? So this will be helpful to us when we study the spectrum later. Now let's move to the next to the next type of modulation, which is the frequency shift key. Frequency shift key. FSK. In the frequency shift key again. Since we are talking about the binary case, we need one frequency to represent binary 1 and another frequency to represent binary 0. And hence, you can say that the signal FSK that will be transmitted, it's either A cosine omega node T, this is in case of binary, let's say binary 0 with omega node for simplicity, or A cosine omega 1 T, in case of you want to transmit binary 1. So we have two frequencies for the carrier, omega naught and omega 1. Omega naught represents binary 0 and omega 1 represents binary 1. In this case, this is called FSK, right? So basically, if you want to sketch in the time domain, of course, these are the time domains. If you want to sketch the signal in the time domain, in case of 1, 0, 1, the amplitude is the same, phase will be 
be uh, the same, okay, and then then for the one you are going to transmit the frequency omega one, and let's assume that uh, omega one without loss of generality, we'll assume that omega one is greater than omega naught. So here you are going to transmit high frequency, which is omega one, and then uh, for Binary Z, we are going to transmit low frequency. I'm trying to uh, sketch it in a nice way. Low frequency, and then binary one again will be high frequency. By the way, the, uh, the phase is not necessarily continuous. The phase at the transition points is not necessarily continuous here. We don't care about the phase, we care about the frequency. So in FSK, the phase might not be continuous. Okay, it might be. The, the, there might be some phase transitions. We don't care about this because the information is not carried in the phase, the information is carried in the frequency. So here we transmit high frequency, omega 1. Here we transmit omega naught. Let me write it in, in a different color. Omega 1. Here we transmit omega naught. And here we transmit omega 1 again. So the information is carried, carried in the frequency. You can see in the FSK, you can see that. It can be written as a summation of two signals, right? You can say that the FSK is equivalent to summation between a signal that looks like this plus another signal that looks like this. A signal that has the high frequencies only Here same, binary 1, so this signal, uh, it has high frequency omega 1, which represents binary 1, okay, so this is omega 1, omega 1, plus another signal, plus another signal that contains the uh, low frequency that represents the binary 0, right, while here we have 0, and here we have 0 and 0, right, so if you sum these two signals, this signal has omega 1 and this signal has a frequency omega 1 while it has 0 here, 0 here. So the FSK signal can be considered or can be seen as a summation of two signals. But what are these two signals? What is the name of these two signals? These are ASK, right? Two ASK signals. This is an ASK signal and this is also an ASK signal. This is an ASK signal, amplitude shift keying signal with frequency omega 1. This is another amplitude shift keying signal with frequency omega node, right? So this is ASK with frequency omega 1 and this is also an ASK on of keying with frequency with frequency omega node. So the FSK signal can be considered to be the summation of summation of two ASK signals, one of them with frequency omega 1 and the other one with frequency omega node. Okay, so this is basically the definition of the three types of modulation. We define them mathematically, we sketch each of them in the fine domain, and we'll see you in the next video where we are going to examine more properties about these types of modulation. See you in the next video.